Masking is a powerful tool in Premiere Pro that allows you to blur, replace the screen, add effects, and more to a shot. Let's review several ways that you can use masks to elevate your content. Blurring is a great place to start and an excellent example of mask use. Let's say we want to blur a subject's face, like in our shot here in the timeline. Look up the Gaussian Blur in the Effects tab and drag it onto our Effect Controls area or directly onto the clip. You can also use a Mosaic Blur if you want as well. Now go on to the Gaussian Blur in the Controls and click on the Ellipse Mask. You can then drag the mask to the subject's face. You can expand it over here in the controls. Right now, we're just gonna go to about there. That looks good. At this point, we now wanna change the blurriness. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 60, but you can choose a different number depending on what your preference is. This looks okay so far, but I think we need to feather it to help ease that transition. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the feather right here. And here's the result. You can also use masking to replace a particular aspect of the shot. Here we have a clip of a man on a bicycle. However, as you can see down in that corner, there's a clip of the shadow of the drone and we don't want that to be in there. So how do we fix this problem? First, we want to duplicate the clip. Then we want to magnify the area we want to adjust. So let's go ahead and change that scale over here. We can drag our window over so you can see the shadow right there front and center. And then now you want to use the pen tool to select that shadow. We'll just click and make a very basic mask right now. So now we want to track that mask forward, which will follow that shadow along the ground. And now you can see that that mask follows that drone shadow pretty well after that track. And now this will help us grab that exact area of the clip that we need to adjust. So let's go ahead and duplicate the clip again. And now we want to expand the masked area and the feather. This will help create a more gradual difference. Now we want to go to the transform effect. You can, of course, drag and drop that into your effect controls or drag it onto the clip directly. And I want to change the position of the clip. You can see it's moving as I'm moving the clip left or right. As you can see, the clip changes under the mask, which gets the top layer of the project to capture that specific section of the clip from another part of the video. So after we change those parameters, now we want to go back and find our Gaussian blur. And then let's just set it to two for now. Just a little bit of blur goes a long way on this type of uh, replacement. Now let's go back and fit this to screen. You know, it's a pretty good result. You can always go in here and tweak it more and more. You can change all these parameters. You can change the position, the scale, but the more you tweak it, the more you can get it to work exactly like you want it to. Now here's our final result. It's not perfect, but it's actually pretty good at covering up that shadow from the drone. Another thing masking can do is isolate a specific part of your shot to alter how it looks. Isolating a certain aspect of the shot can be used for color correction or even replacing those elements entirely. In this clip, we wanna change the sky. Select the pen tool and then mask out the specific line here on the horizon to match the horizon uh, shape. Go ahead and go through and click to create a mask around every single one of those mountains like this. And then once you finish the mask, you can see that the sky here is isolated. We'll fit it back to the screen. And now once that's done, we want to duplicate the video. So after we duplicate the video, you want to go into your lower layer, your bottom layer, and you want to delete that mask. So we can now see the masked layer on top, and then the full clip without a mask on it below. Now go up to Window and select the Lumetri Color panel. Now we can adjust the sky using these options as we prefer. We can change the saturation, we can change the exposure, the contrast, the highlights, whites, blacks, shadows, and you can see our difference with the sky after correction, it looks like that. 
And the cool thing is, this is a free clip from the Pond5 free collection. So you can go ahead and go down to the link in the description and download this clip yourself and start practicing this same technique on your clips. In this last one, we'll do the same thing, but we wanna replace the sky with a different sky clip. We'll go to the effect controls, and then I'm going to mask out everything in the foreground of this clip so we have just the sky isolated. So now that we've got our sky masked, we want to duplicate the clip. And on the bottom clip, make sure that you uncheck the inverted box. So now you've got both your clips here. You wanna take down the mask opacity just a little bit. Next thing we wanna do is take the clip that we're using for the sky and we wanna drag it onto the bottom layer. Now we have a different, more starry sky in the background than we had with the original clip. However, you can see that it's not really playing at the same speed. Everything's fast, moving really fast in the shot, but the sky is still moving quite slowly. So to change the speed, go ahead and right click on the sky clip go to speed or duration. You can also hit control R or command R and that will bring up your speed controls. And for this, we're just gonna change it to 200%. We're just gonna double the speed. And you can see that it does line up a little better with the speed of the action in the foreground. Now we can just do some color correction again to match the clips better. We'll change our contrast, exposures, whites, blacks, do some basic color correction to match. And here's our final result. Have you got any more masking tools you want us to cover? Let us know in the comments below and get started using this helpful tool to make your projects go to the next level.